Bullet Train on 4K Blu-ray. This movie was crazy. Here is my review. I've been to Tokyo Airport. This movie looks really, really good on 4K with Dolby Vision HDR. The whole time with all these like bright purple and pink and blue colors, I kept waiting for the the color gradation on those bright color spots to be all broken up and clunky looking. Um, but it looked clean and good the whole time. I've never seen a movie be able to hold that kind of bright lighting before and keep keep it all separate and gradated. If that's a word but you know what I mean and of course as you could probably imagine the sound on this thing the Dolby Atmos was really active and exciting and all over the place I thought it was really great all right I actually may be downplaying this a little bit this is easily one of the best looking 4k images that I've ever seen this was impressive all the way through if you want to see what a 4k movie looks like this is probably a good choice I really like Brad Pitt's character in this movie where he's really trying to to put peace out into the world so he can get peace back even though he's traditionally been an assassin i think this is a this is an awesome idea for a character and he played it really well look at the detail on this image oh my gosh like the fruit okay this might be the a candidate for my absolute favorite shot <laughs> look at his face oh it's too bad he's so ugly looking with bad hair all right, here is a surprise visit from Logan Lerman, who usually plays a nice, sweet, young little man, is this guy. And look at his tattoo. Look at this thing. Now, isn't that someone you could be friends with or let date your daughter? I love this conversation they have about wearing a bulletproof vest or bullet resistance vest, resistant vest. You still got that vest on, yeah? Oh, no, let's give you a full sense of security. You might not get shot in the neck. Yeah, it also stops you from getting shot in the chest, but I guess you missed that episode of Thomas, did you? I really must have, because that <laughs> sounds dark as shit. <laughs> okay, the reason I like that conversation where he asks if he has the vest on and he's like, no, it gives you a false sense of security. Um, other than that, just the idea of it is in firefighting, there's like a school of thought in other countries where the fire shelter, carrying a fire shelter gives you a false sense of security and makes you take unnecessary risks. And so some firefighters in other countries don't, some wildland firefighters don't carry the fire shelter, which is basically like a, looks like a tinfoil Twinkie that you hide in if you're going to get overrun by uh, the fire. See movie Only the Brave. Anyway, so, uh, but it's a good idea to have it to protect you. And same thing with body armor. I like this conversation here, and it was funny. This guy is about to facilitate something that I love in action movies. So this silly event of Brad Pitt's phone getting stabbed and him losing his phone actually is, in my opinion, an action movie convention that is one of my absolute favorites, and that is the hero losing something, one of their... One of their items one of their bits of gear one of their capabilities and then having to go through the movie without it and so i know it's just a cell phone but this is what he was talking to um sandra bullock with and she's like his handler and can like guide him through stuff so without this his communications are cut off and then he has to kind of go without it and two examples of this are in temple of doom when the sword guy shows up and then Indy does, he smiles and then reaches into his holster, but it's empty. So he has to deal with that situation without something he normally has, which I think makes it more interesting and cool. And then also the other example is in the movie Children of Men, which when Clive Owen has to hurry and evacuate the house to get away from the people that have decided to kill him. And it's in the middle of the night slash early morning and he doesn't have shoes on and it's like muddy outside. He's like got socks. So he's like trying to steal this car and escape while running around in the mud with no shoes and that just him losing just that little piece of thing that makes it easier makes the action scene way more interesting or not action scene in general but just like the movie so when characters are losing important pieces uh i think it i think it makes it more interesting <laughs> so this movie has tons of awesome fight scenes with great choreography and this one in particular where 
um, Brad Pitt's talking about how he needs, he's trying to get bad things out of his life. And then they start fighting and they're trying to be quiet. This part had a very awesome Jackie Chan homage or tribute or whatever. I don't care what anyone says. This is a Jackie Chan tribute right here. I'm going to show you. Right there. That part where Brad Pitt gets hit in the shin and then he's like, oh, and he's, he's rubbing his shin. That is totally... That's totally a Jackie Chan thing. I saw that and I was like, yes. Oh, I forgot to say something I wanted to say about this scene where he, where they're fighting here. Um, so he's talking about how he wants to to have more peace in his life. Um, but once he's confronted with an actual fight, I love that he just like goes into action and he's actually really good at it. So he's trying to be peaceful, but he won't. He'll actually do a fight if he needs to, which kind of reminded me of Captain Kirk in that way. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why. It just makes me feel so happy to see these little anime mascot things getting hit in the face. <laughs> I mean, my goodness, look at that hair. Too bad it's just so dang ugly. This movie has awesome cinematography. Look at this thing. Look at that. So much energy in all these shots. And then this next thing. That's so cool. Can't let too much of that go or they'll get me. And I always love these. The split diopter shot always reminds me of the good, bad, and the ugly. Um, they kind of just take my breath away when I see them. I'm not going to lie. I love this. In action movies, I always, always appreciate a good, accurate reload. I feel like the mummy was the first movie that really stood out to me that had reloading. Like, I'm specifically thinking of the action scene on the boat. Oh, the 1999 Mummy. The action scene on the boat where I think you get to see him reloading a good amount of times. Anyway, it just, it just, it just touches my heart. I really liked all of Brad Pitt's character's uh, therapy session sayings throughout the movie. I thought they were really accurate and funny. So overall, I thought this thing was a fun train mystery. Uh, it's pretty extreme. So if that's if that's not your bag, boop. then probably not this movie for you. But yeah, I laughed out loud a handful of times on funny parts, on dark humor parts. But it was it was pretty dang funny, and the editing was really good. Like how it kept going back and forth between different backstories and kind of playing with. Uh, the flow of time, but boop. I think I'm going to sell this actually. So I liked it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was funny and fun and well-made, but I don't, um, I don't think I'm going to have the urge to watch it again, honestly. So I really, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I really liked it, but trying to be selective with what goes on my shelves and really pick things that I'm going to watch over and over. And I don't think this is it. So I'm going to be selling this. I will say that I like me some stunt guys who make movies. I feel like it makes the action really good and believable and fun. This movie also had awesome Foley. I think my favorite Foley moment in the whole movie, I'm not going to show you because in case you haven't seen it, I don't want to ruin that part, but it involves a bottle of carbonated water hitting someone in the face best sound in the movie i think uh so my wife thought the movie was very intense she had a lot of she thought it was a lot of fun she enjoyed the twisty turny plot and then she found out that when it was based on a book she's like ah that's why the plot was so good okay and for her also this was kind of a one and done thing she doesn't really have a desire to watch it more um an example of a movie that is one and done for her that she would be okay watching again, but doesn't really want to watch again is the movie Life of Pi, where she liked it, um, but she doesn't really feel a need to watch it again. So yeah, she thought this movie was fun and enjoyed watching it, but ultimately wouldn't watch it again. And because she didn't really feel like she took away anything from it, kind of like she did with Life of Pi, where she enjoyed that, but doesn't need to watch it again, but she felt like she got something out of it. 
Um, whereas this one, I think the gory images were were too much. So heads up if that's a issue. Okay, bullet train. I liked it. I had fun with it, but I'm not going to keep it and I'm going to sell it. So what did you think? And what are some of your favorite action movies? Also, this guy did a really good job in this movie. Boop. Thanks for watching. Bye.